coming here today. The, the point of this meeting is just to meet the candidates for your local area, get to know them, get to know me as well. So thank you for coming. So, what is today about? Today is about our freedoms, right? Yay. Our guiding yeah. freedoms, yeah. getting those back, of course, we all know that. But what I also want to talk about as well is some of our policies. Some of our policies which we've released quite recently. I've got them here, they are fresh off the press. I'm going to read them to you right now just so that we're all on the same page as to what's going on with the United Australia Party. Now I'm not going to cover all of them, there are way too many, I'll be here all day, they're all on the website, but I'll give you the main ones. The, the first policy that we have, that we have, is to stop the sell-off of our agricultural land and our strategic assets to foreign powers. Yay! We have to stop that. Yay! That needs to stop, okay? So assets of strategic significance must not be in the hands of foreign companies, foreign nations, foreign governments. They must be in Australian hands. Amen. Australian yes. hands. Yeah, yeah. People who have sworn allegiance to the red, white, and blue. Yeah. People who live here, okay? And that's fair enough, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll give you an example. The Port of Darwin. The Port of Darwin was basically sold off to the Chinese Communist Party. Now, not the Chinese people. The Chinese people are good people. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Chinese Communist Party. There is a difference. Chinese people are just like us. They just want their freedom. It's the government of China that's the problem. Big difference there. So, I don't know if you know as well, but uh, the Chinese Communist Party built an airport in Western Australia that they control. Imagine how we would go building a, an Australian airport over in over in China that we control. No way! No way it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. So the CCP's influence on Australian politics, on Australian business, must be looked into. We must shine a light upon it. We must do that. The next policy is to pay back the $1,000 billion of debt that the Liberal and the Labor Party have put us in. Okay? Why is that important? I'm going to tell you. Now, only the UAP has a plan to tackle this debt. Labor and Liberal do not have a plan. They have not talked about it. They're sweeping it under the rug. That's what they're doing right now. So the debt. Now, you might be tempted to think that this debt is from JobKeeper. No. Or something like that. It's not. $200 billion approximately is from JobKeeper. Where's the $800 billion plus of that debt? I don't know where it is. Do you know? I don't know. It's in some pub somewhere. Don't want to tell me where it is because I don't know. It's in dictator Dan's garage. Now, there was a study done recently by the European Central Bank on public debt and the effect on long term interest rates. Now, this study focused on Germany, Italy, and the USA. Right? So, the relationship between high debt levels and interest rates over a 10 year period was analysed. It was very clear. It demonstrated that interest rates will most not will most likely not only double in the next few years, double, but quadruple. Quadruple. Now what does it mean to the average person if the interest rate quadruple? What does it mean? You know what it means. Of course. Now the Commonwealth Bank, our very own Commonwealth Bank, predicted that there will be four home loan increases this year. Just, and that's from the Commonwealth Bank, that's not from the UAP, that's not from me. That's the Commonwealth Bank. Now inflation is rising its head in Australia with prices increasing for fuel, energy and basic essentials. We all see it. You go to Coles or Woolworths now, you spend a hundred bucks, what do you get? Nothing. You can't get any for a hundred bucks. That's inflation. Inflation is a hidden tax on the public. That's what it is. It's a hidden tax. Now, after the election, it is all but guaranteed that we are going to face what I think is runaway inflation. It's going to devastate Australian families. It's going to devastate Australian businesses. It's going to, de it's going to devastate our independence and the freedom of our nation. That's what it's going to do. Now, studies have shown that if home loan interest rates double from 2 to 4%, approximately 60% of all mortgages are going to do is severe mortgage threat if it goes from 2 to 4. It also goes, if it goes to between 6 and 8, the default rate is going to be extremely high. 
Now numbers vary. I've seen as five ninety percent on the default rate. Yeah. That's how serious this is going to be. Because we have to remember, a lot of Australian families have overstretched, overstretched, unfortunately, oh, and borrowed the maximum that they could on their home. If it goes from four, uh, from from two to six or to eight. That's going to cause pain. It absolutely is. Now our treasurer, his name is Josh Frydenberg from the Liberal Party. He intends to pay back our debt. He said, I'm going to pay it back, don't worry about it. We've got it handled. Under his plan, this is what he said, under his plan, he intends to take 150 years to pay it back. And we don't have 150 years. 150 years. This guy's joking. He's joking. That's what he's doing. Absolutely. And don't forget the relationship between, between interest rates and debt. Higher debt, higher interest rates. We can't afford to wait. We must act now to save our home, but not only our home, our small businesses as well. Because small businesses employ so many people in this country. Now, how do we plan to pay off our debt? How do we plan? The debt racked up by Labor and Liberal, they're both the same, they did it together. We will introduce a 15% export license on all iron ore exports from Australia. Now, as you know, our party's founder, Clive Palmer, he exports iron ore. He's effectively, effectively putting a 15% export license on himself. And the other producers, they're not going to like him, but that's okay, he doesn't care. What he cares about is saving Australia, saving Australian jobs, saving the Australian people. Don't forget, Clive Palmer's a self-made man. He didn't start out a billionaire, he grew up right here in Melbourne. Yeah? He's just like us. He, he, he was lucky in business, of course, but he remembers what it was like to be an ordinary, normal person struggling through life. And we're very lucky to have him on board. He gets a bad luck in the media. I've met him a few times. He's a decent guy. He's very straightforward. He's actually quite nice. So we're very lucky to have him, and we're very lucky that he's offered to put an export license on himself to pay back the debt. Racked up by the Liberal. Go Clyde. Yes. Now our modelling, which we are going to release before the election, predicts that we will reduce our debt by 70% in the next 15 years. By 70%. And we need to do that. We need to do it. Now, export licenses are nothing new. They're nothing new. We used to have them right here in Australia back in around the 60s. And in many Asian countries, so, such as Indonesia, they already have export licenses for their nickel and other resources because they are seeking to protect their national interests. And that's what every country must do, protect your own national interests. Don't protect other people, protect us first and then help others after, once we sort out right here in our own backyard. Now, our other policy is to cap interest rates. We're going to cap interest rates at 3% by way of legislation. We need to cap interest rates for the next five years, but only on the family home, on the family home. We need to save the family home. There are six million Australian homes right now that need to be saved. Now the prosperity and freedom of all Australians, the independence of our very country depends on the family home. Without the family home, this country is gonna fall apart. Without mum and dad and kids, fall apart. We cannot afford to let a whole country be dispossessed because of what Labor and Liberal have done. Now the other policy that we have is to bring our super back right here to Australia to be used within Australia. Now, I don't know if you know, but there's around $3.5 trillion of Australian super. And most of it is overseas. Most of it is invested overseas in the US and things like this, funding projects over there, growing businesses over there, and it's not spent here. We need to bring it back. Okay, so we're going to make sure that these super funds bring back at least a trillion dollars of that money and invest it right here in Australia. And that's going to benefit all of us. Invest in Australian companies, invest in Australian infrastructure projects, use the money here, grow companies here. Companies growing will provide jobs, they'll pay tax. This is a good thing, it is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. So it's projected by 2041, by 2041, we'll have approximately $9.5 trillion in super. They've got to bring that money here. Look after us first, then help overseas after you've looked after us. The next policy, as you all know, is end lockdowns and end vaccine passports. We all get that one. That's an easy one. Yay.
Next one is respect the sanctity of a doctor-patient relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It's common sense, right? I mean, come on. What does a government bureaucrat know about my health? Nothing. Nothing. These guys couldn't organise a drink in a brewery, let alone my health. No way. No way. It's up to myself and my doctor, yourself and your doctor, what happens to your personal medical choices. Okay? The other one is abolish national cabinet. That's a straightforward one. For those of you that don't know, what is the National Cabinet? It's a cabinet formed by, by the Prime Minister and the Premiers, basically, and a few Chief Ministers, and they make all the decisions to the exclusion of all other members of Parliament. That's what they do. That's not right. We elected our local members, and they need to be able to speak for us. They need to be able to speak for us. The National Cabinet is not right. As far as I'm concerned, it's borderline dictatorship. Yeah. Borderline. Yeah. Borderline. The other one which we have is we want to make interest on home loans tax deductible. Okay, we want to encourage home ownership, the backbone of this country. We, 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 we want to boost the construction industry and help everyday Australians get ahead in tough times. The great Australian dream is rapidly beyond the reach of too many hard-working Australians. Too many. Can't afford a home now. What's it worth for a house about $800,000 for a house? I mean, are you kidding me? That's crazy. It's crazy. You're paying off the thing for 30 years, 800 grand plus interest. It's not right. It's not right. not going to listen to me. The other policy is you want to increase the age pension by $180 a week straight away. Absolutely. So we want to give our elderly our elderly citizens the respect that they deserve. Now the age pension that the Liberal and Labour Party have, have allowed for our loved ones is an insult to their contribution to Australia. And, and it's an absolute insult. And it's not hard to increase it to 180 bucks a week if you manage the economy properly. Okay, we've got people running the country right now that have no business experience at all. They haven't even run a small business. They don't know what they're doing. They're government bureaucrats. They are wasteful. That's what they are. We need people um, that are experienced in business making the big decisions. That's what that's what we need. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's go to the next one. So the, the next one is strengthen Australia's defence. Strengthen our defence. It needs to be done. It needs to be done. It's one of those things that I wish we didn't have to spend money on, but that's the reality, the reality of our world, and we do. We must budget to defend our nation, not to achieve politically correct outcomes. We must protect our country from ever-increasing threats right here in our backyard. We cannot rely on other nations anymore who may or may not come to our aid in times of distress. The other one is we need to protect. Thank you, sir. We need to protect free speech from tech giants. Foreign tech giants needs to be done. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, they should not be able to censor Australian political debate. Not now, not ever. Not now, not, no, no censorship at all. Okay, well, of course, if someone's, you know, causing violence, or of course, but within, within reason. So the United Australia Party will seek to implement laws that prevent foreign interference in Australian politics, our elections, and censorship of free speech. Okay, these guys need to be legislated. They need to because they're not doing the right thing by anyone right now across the world. Now, we need to protect Australian values. We need to. Yes, we need to protect the values that have been built and developed in this country since Federation. We believe in the most basic freedoms of parliamentary democracy. Speech, religion, freedom from fear, freedom of association. It includes respect for our constitution and the rule of law, which underpins our democratic society and protects the rights, freedoms and liberties of every single Australian. The other one. The other one, zonal taxation for regional communities. Regional communities are the backbone of this nation. Yeah, it is. And, United, and the United States Party is committed to stimulating economic growth in rural areas. The cities bursting at the seams, heavy congestion, housing affordability issues, mounting cost of living pressures. 
we will provide a 20% tax concession incentive to people living more than 200 k's out of the capital.